In this video, we will be seeing about the basics of an inverter or a DC to AC converter. What is a rectifier? It converts AC voltage to DC voltage. If you do the inversion process, that is convert a DC voltage to AC voltage, we call it as an inverter. So if I give a DC input, I will get a AC output of particular magnitude and frequency. So I can change the parameters here to get a different frequency output. Why do we need an inverter? In our house, we get AC supply and when there is a power cut, we suffer a lot. The reason behind this, we cannot store this AC power. So far, there are no AC batteries to store the AC charge, but there are DC batteries which can store the DC charge. That is why you, we use a home inverter where when AC power is available, we will store the charge in the DC batteries and when there is no AC power, this DC battery can be used to supply the AC loads. If you take a home inverter, when there is AC power available, this inverter unit can act as a rectifier and charge the batteries so it converts ac to dc and charges the battery and when there is a power cut the charge stored in the battery is used to supply the ac loads using this inverter actually it is called a inverter unit but it can perform both rectification and inversion have you ever noticed that when you supply the fan and tube light from a home inverter sometimes you hear some humming noise and um, the speed of the fan may be slow and uh, you can see that if you are frequently feeding from an inverter this fan coil get damaged quickly and to, uh, tube light also get burns out easily so the reason is that this home inverter will actually give you a square wave output but our devices are designed to operate at a sinusoidal waveform so why this home inverter is giving a square wave output instead of a sine wave output let us see that so our desired waveform is a AC waveform but actually an inverter produces square waveform. So what is inside this square waveform? So if you analyze the square waveform you can see that there is a fundamental sinusoidal component which is what we need. The remaining terms are called harmonics which are multiples of the fundamental frequency waveform. So all these things will contribute to the heat or it has to be these are all unwanted things which has to be removed and only this sinusoidal component is what we need. So we can either use a filter to remove this harmonics or you can use pulse width modulation techniques to remove those things. Actually, this increases the cost of the whole system. That is why the home inverters normally provide a square wave output. So because of this square wave only, our tube light and fan get damaged quickly. How to get the square wave? So this is the DC input for the inverter and I need a AC output square wave output like this. So I take a battery which will give you a DC input like this and connecting to a load have two terminals A and B. So I am assuming that the, if the current flows from A to B I take it as a positive direction. If the current flows in opposite direction it will be a negative current. So AB is considered to be positive. So uh, in this case, I will get the output like this. Suppose 
I want this portion, negative portion. So what I have to do? I have to make the current to flow from B to A. So how it is possible? I will interchange the connection. So this positive is connected to B and this is to negative. Negative is connected to A so that my current direction changes. So I will get this negative part here. So if I repeat this sequence that is changing the connection from A to B again and again, I can get a sequence of pulses that is a square wave output I can get. So I cannot do it manually, but I can use some sort of switches to make it make the connection again and again. So this is the circuit to get a square wave output. So you have four switches with the input supply DC connected at one end and the load is connected between the two bridges. So this is one leg and this is another leg. So in between that the load is connected. Here the load is considered to be a R load. So when T1 and T2 contacts current flows from A to B. So you will get the output voltage as positive T1 and T2 contacts. When T3 and T4 contacts, the current flows from B to A. So it is opposite, you are getting a negative part. Since it is considered to be a resistive load, V0 and I0 waveform will be in phase or same waveform except that magnitude will be different. Now, this is the total time period. One on and off period is considered to be a total time period that is equal to 1 by frequency. For we need a sine waveform of 50 hertz frequency because in our country, India, we need 50 hertz supply. So for 50 hertz output, you take 1 by 50 that is equal to 20 millisecond. So T1 and T2 should be on for 10 millisecond. T3 and T4 should be on for 10 millisecond so that your output will be a 50 hertz signal. And here if you see here when T1 is on, T1 is on, T4 should be off. If both are on at the same time, this DC supply will get shorted. So T1 and T4 are said to be complementary switches. Similarly, T3 and T2 are complementary switches, meaning that only one of the switches can be on at any time. Don't turn on both the switches at the same time. It will short the supply. So they are said to be complementary switches. Now let us consider the RL load. So you cannot use the same circuit for RL load because when T1 and T2 contacts, the current flows from A to B. When T3 and T4 is now turned on, the current has to flow in opposite direction. But the property of inductance is that it cannot allow its current direction to change immediately. So we have to provide a path for this current to flow in the same direction for some time. So you can go for a bidirectional switch that is bidirectional current carrying capability switch. So in case of non-resistive load, it is always preferred to use a diode in anti-parallel with the switches so that it allows the current to flow in the same direction for some time. This is the circuit diagram when diodes are connected in anti-parallel. Now let us assume that T1 and T2 is conducting the current and the current flows through AB. Now if T1 and T2 are turned off, the current has to flow in the same direction. It cannot change its direction immediately because of the nature of the load. So in that case, the diodes will take care of the load current. So 
diode D3 and D4 now carries the current in the same direction till the current becomes zero. Then only T3 and T4 will get turned on. If you see the switches for inverter, thyristors can be used but thyristors cannot be turned off easily. So you have to use forced commutation. Then we can use self commutated devices like BJT, IGBT or MOSFET. In BJT it is a current control device so you have to give base current and if you remove the base current it gets turned off. IGBT and volt MOSFET are a voltage control device so if you remove the gate voltage both the devices will get turned off easily. So depending upon your requirement if you need high frequency application or high power application you can choose a particular device. So the thyristors are mostly preferred for very high power applications. So the points to remember here are inverter converts DC to AC and it produces a square wave output and this square wave consists of a fundamental component and harmonics. You have to remove the harmonics using some filter or pulse width modulation technique. So when thyristors are used you have to use a forced commutation circuit or else you can use BJT MOSFET can be used. So always connect a diode in anti-parallel for non-resistive loads. If you want the study material, you can visit this website and if you like the video, do subscribe to Read Electric Vehicle channel. And these are some of the references. Thank you.